Summary of a Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. Ignatius J. Riley, a fat young man wearing a hunting cap and other strange clothes, waits outside a department store in New Orleans, Louisiana, for his mother, Irene. Ignatius is an expert from the Middle Ages who hates the modern world. While Ignatius is waiting, patrolman Mancuso comes up to him and tries to arrest him because he seems strange. Ignatius and Mancuso get into a fight, and Claude Robichaud, an old man, tries to protect Ignatius. When Irene comes out of the shop, she yells at patrolman Mancuso to arrest Claude, who she says started everything, and she and Ignatius run away. They hide in the Night of Joy, a strip club close by, and order beers there. Ignatius and Irene start talking to the barman, Darlene, and a trendy young man named Dorian Green. When the bar owner, Lana Lee, comes back, she kicks Ignatius and Irene out because they are not the kind of people she wants in her bar. At this point, Irene is very drunk, and when she tries to leave, she crashes her car. As he walks home, patrolman Mancuso sees the accident and gives Irene a $1,000 fine. At the police station, Claude Robichaud is in the same cell as Burma Jones, a black man who was falsely accused of stealing cashew nuts and jailed. Jones is kept in jail even though the cops know he is not guilty. Claude is sent home because the captain realizes he was wrong and blames patrolman Mancuso. The sergeant tells Mancuso that he will have to wear a different outfit to work every day until he catches someone who is really suspicious. Jones is also let go, but he is told to find a job or he will be arrested as a homeless person. Jones makes his way to the Night of Joy and takes a job as a porter, which makes him sad. Jones can't afford to turn down the job, and Lana says she'll call the cops on him if he tries to quit. Jones becomes friends with Darlene, who tells him she wants to become an exotic dancer. Irene tells Ignatius that he needs to find a job so that he can help pay off her fine. Patrolman Mancuso goes to see Irene and comforts her. She is very upset about the car accident and the fact that Ignatius is jobless, spends all his money at the movies, and doesn't help her around the house. Irene agrees when Mancuso asks her to bowl with him and his aunt, Santa Battaglia. Ignatius, meanwhile, starts looking for a job with anger. He finally gets a job as a clerk in the office of a company called Levy Pants, which makes clothes. Mr. Gonzalez, a quiet man, runs the office, and Mr. Levy, the boss, is never there. The only other worker is an old woman called Miss Trixie, who wants to quit as soon as possible. Mr. Levy and Mr. Gonzalez also want her to retire, but Mr. Levy's wife, Mrs. Levy, tells him that Miss Trixie needs to keep working because it keeps her healthy. Ignatius fits in well at the office, even though he is always late and throws away all the papers he is meant to file when Mr. Gonzalez isn't looking. He sends a rude letter to Mr. Abelman, a customer who has complained about Mr. Levy's goods, but he signs it with Mr. Levy's name instead of his own. He also starts writing a journal about his work experiences. This is in addition to the book he is writing about the Middle Ages, which he thinks will have a big impact. He wants his ex-girlfriend, Myrna Minkoff, who lives in New York and is a political leader on the left, to be annoyed by the journal. Ignatius and Myrna often write letters to each other. After Myrna writes a particularly offensive letter in which she accuses Ignatius of being politically out of touch, Ignatius plans to organize a race riot at the Levy Pants factory. He knows that most of the plant workers are black and make less than the minimum wage. Ignatius tells the workers to bring guns to work and tries to get them to attack Mr. Gonzalez on the day of the protest. But the black workers don't want to do this, so Ignatius's plan to start a fight fails. When Mr. Levy finds out what Ignatius did, he fires him. Mrs. Levy is not happy about this. She thinks Ignatius is a young idealist and says that Mr. Levy must bring Miss Trixie to the house so Mrs. Levy can give her a makeover as payment for what he did. At the night of joy, Jones is trying to find a way to hurt Lana's business. He has seen that a young boy comes in every day, takes items from Lana, and gives her money. Jones wants to know what's going on, and Lana tells George in secret not to come back when Jones is around. Darlene begs Lana to let her show off her unusual dance routine, 
which she has been practicing with her pet cockatoo. The cockatoo will rip her clothes off as part of the show. Jones thinks this is a chance to do something bad, so he tells Lana to give Darlene a chance. Lana finally agrees, but after seeing Darlene's show, she wants some changes. Lana says that Darlene's act is too racy and that she should instead dress as a virgin Y Southern Belle. Jones has to dress up as a slave on a farm and run the door. When Lana leaves the room, Jones looks in a band cabinet under the bar and sees the packages Lana gives to George. On one of these, he writes the location of the club. Irene is happy to be friends with Santa and their new friend, Claude Robichaud. Claude Robichaud met Santa by chance and remembered Irene from when Ignatius got arrested. Santa tries to set up Claude and Irene because Claude likes Irene. As far as Santa can tell, the only problem is Ignatius, who she thinks is a waste of room. Santa wants Ignatius to be shut up and tells Irene that she should put him in a mental hospital. Even though he hasn't arrested anyone yet, patrolman Mancuso has been demoted and now works in the toilet of the bus stop. Ignatius gives him the consolation of philosophy by Boethius to read. One afternoon, Mancuso tries to arrest George because he saw him with a strange package, but George gets away and steals the book. Lana asks George for school materials for a project, which seems to have something to do with the mysterious packages, so George gives her the book. Ignatius goes out to look for another job and finds Paradise Vendors, which is a hot dog stand. He gets a job there, but he eats most of the hot dogs himself and doesn't make any money. Mr. Clyde, the boss, makes Ignatius dress up as a pirate and sends him to the French Quarter to draw in tourists. Ignatius meets Dorian Green one afternoon in the French Quarter. He finds out that Dorian is openly gay, which gives Ignatius an idea for how he can get involved in politics and annoy Myrna he will start a political party of gay men who will be too busy having sex with each other to go to war. Ignatius thinks that by doing this, he will bring peace to the whole world. Dorian agrees to have a party, and Ignatius goes home happily to tell Myrna about it. Patrolman Mancuso is at the bus station now, so George can't hide Lana's packages there anymore. He needs to find another place to put them. He chooses to hide them in Ignatius's hot dog cart, and Ignatius agrees as long as George watches the cart for him. Ignatius takes one of George's packages and opens it to find pornographic pictures inside. The woman in the pictures stands with school supplies, the same ones Lana asked George for, and Ignatius is surprised to see that she has the consolation of philosophy over her face. He thinks that the woman must be another smart person, so he sets out to find her. On his way home, he goes by the night of joy and sees Jones at the door. He asks Jones if any of the women who work there like to read. Jones says yes. By Darlene, he means someone who reads magazines. Jones thinks that Ignatius might cause trouble at the night of joy, which would hurt Lana. He tells Ignatius that he should come to the first night of Darlene's show. Ignatius thinks that Darlene is the woman who agrees to come and reads Boethius. Ignatius goes to Dorian's party and finds that it is a wild place where only gay men hang out. He tries to win them over with a speech about world peace, but it doesn't go well, and three violent lesbians kick Ignatius out of the party. Ignatius goes to the Night of Joy, where Darlene's opening night is about to start, because he is angry. Ignatius goes in and finds a place to sit. When Darlene's show starts, though, the cockatoo sees that Ignatius is still wearing his pirate costume from work and grabs his earring. Ignatius almost got hit by a bus when he fell out into the street while wrestling with the bird. Jones pulled him back just in time. Ignatius passes out, and a crowd forms around him, including a few newspaper reporters. Lana Lee runs outside and tells Jones and Darlene that they are fired. Lana tries to sell him a pornographic photo when a guy in a silk suit comes up to her. But it turns out that this man is patrolman Mancuso, and he puts Lana in jail. When Ignatius gets home from the hospital, where he went after hitting his head when he fell, Mr. Levy tells him that Mr. Abelman is suing him for a letter he thinks Ignatius wrote. Ignatius says he didn't write the letter and tells Mr. Levy that Miss Trixie did because Mrs. Levy won't let her retire. 
Mr. Levy agrees with him, so he leaves. Irene is embarrassed that the newspaper showed Ignatius passed out in front of a strip club. She is tired of her son and calls Santa for help. Santa tells Irene that they have to put Ignatius in the insane hospital because Irene is now engaged to Claude and needs to start a new life. Santa calls for an ambulance to take Ignatius away, and Irene says yes. Irene doesn't want Ignatius to be taken away, so she runs out of the house and cries as she says goodbye to him. Ignatius figures out what his mother did and knows he needs to get away, but he doesn't know how. He is surprised when the doorbell rings and Myrna is standing there. She drove to see him from New York. Ignatius says they have to leave at once, and he and Myrna run away just as the ambulance pulls into the yard. About the author. John Kennedy Toole was born in 1937 in Louisiana, in the city of New Orleans. Toole was a smart child, and his mother, Thelma Ducoing Toole, had a lot of faith in him. Toole did well in school and wrote his first book, The Neon Bible, when he was only 16 years old. Toole went to Tulane University on a grant when he was 17. He studied English literature there. Toole spent a lot of time with his musical friends in the French Quarter of New Orleans when he was in college. He was the editor of the college newspaper and spent a lot of time there. People thought the place was bad, and Toole's family didn't like it when he went there. Toole later got a master's degree from Columbia University in New York. After that, the University of Southwestern Louisiana offered him a job as an assistant professor. Toole then became a professor at New York's Hunter University. In 1961, he was forced to join the army and was sent to Puerto Rico, where he taught English to Spanish trainees. Toole was soon given a higher position and a private room, where he started writing a confederacy of dunces. After he got back to New Orleans, he finished the book and tried several times but failed to get it published. Toole became a professor at a Catholic college, where he was known for being funny and well-liked. After Dunces was turned down, Toole went through a time of mental illness and killed himself at the age of 31 in 1969. After several failed efforts, Toole's mother got the book published in 1980. In 1981, after Toole had died, he was given a Pulitzer Prize. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.